Hey guys, uh, we took a, a poll on our uh, Gas House Facebook page the other day about what kind of video y'all want to see. And uh, as usual with the internet, we got uh, anything from the car, my car's a shit box, to who I should go try to race, to uh, some really inappropriate comments uh, that Whoa. definitely weren't PG-13. Um, so what I could decipher from what I got out of it was we the people wanted there was like two guys wanting suspension videos and usually that's where most of the questions with the gas would lie is how do you get a straight axle under one how do you do it blah 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 and so we've got bad juju here this is my race car so we're going to just go over this one this is the only one that i have right now here that you know we built several of them but okay so let's start with uh with frame rails We'll start there. This is, uh, I prefer doing uh, box uh, frame rails like this, tube, square tube, rectangular tube. I don't know, I never learned my shapes. So this is a, a two by four eighth inch. Uh, this is what I like to use. It's held up well. This car gets raced and um, gets beat on pretty, pretty hard and everything. And I've never had any problems with it. Um, so what I, what I started with is right here is where I cut it. You can probably see it's about right in, in here. Uh, this is four and a half inches from this front mount is where I like to cut them. Now you can't cut them out here and retain your uh, stock steering box and stuff if you wanna go that route, which there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, all of them I've cut have been back there. Uh, so what I did was I, I made another video where we bullnose the the front of these frame rails and that'll be coming because i'm about to build some more to put the angle in them around the ends and all that but what you end up with is just piece here that you cut out i ended up putting it back here this is the front of that piece right here and it, it blends the frame rail it makes this taller you know to maybe like five five and a half inches so it blends into the rail um several things i do i i take hole saws back here i uh I drill in here with holes, holes to plug weld. Um, some guys put, actually put a, a, another another gusset down here on the bottom. Um, you know, you just want to get the thing in there pretty good. Uh, this piece added a lot of structure to it. Um, from there, we did uh, Speedway Springs. Um, these are a little stiff if you're going to race on them, um, but they're pretty good for the street. They're just the Speedway 31 and a half eye to eye, I believe the shackles in the rear solid mounts in the front um these work good they're you know they're affordable and and they work fine i've never seen any of them break or anything like that and i'm sure if you pulled too many leaves out you could break them doing wheelies on them um the axle that we used is a drilled um 55 through 59 Chevrolet truck axle and the reason I like these axles on a tri-5 is your mounting pads right here are uh, the centers are 31 and 7 8 now the center of a stock tri-5 frame is 32 inches so what you wind up with is this your axle sits your leaf spring sits directly below your frame rails so there's no drama there. You just mount the springs. Everything lines up that way. These are a little wide, but most of the time on a gasser, you're going to use a you know a skinny tire, which and it, and it works out fine like that. It sets them out. They don't look too goofy or anything. Um, on this car, I wanted to. I wouldn't do steering like this again, but this is what I did on this one, which is I, I built these motor mounts. Uh, I mocked them up and, and built these and they've been fine. I run the steering through here Terrible idea. don't know what I was thinking, but it works and I'm gonna end up putting a mid plate in this thing to Try to save my tail. Maybe a front front mount too. I built a, a plate right here this is a um, This is you can see the mounting plate I built here out of thick This is a 525 Saginaw box used on any manual steering setup in a 60s GM car now, I wanted to run the pitman arm to the rear, like that, right? 
So the car steers backwards when you do that, if you're using rear steer. So I had to reverse this box. I, I actually put um, the guts out of a, a, a Mopar, a manual Mopar aluminum box in it. And that turned it around where I could run the steering uh, stupid like I wanted to here. But it's been fine. And I assume it'll continue to be fine. This car has been built for like 10 years. This again here, another bad idea that works. Um, is standing the steering arm off. I, I could build a, 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 a brace in here, you know, to make this one solid piece. The reason I did that is to clear the brakes. And this is the first one that I ever built. So to clear the brakes back here, um, like on Jenny Moses' car, we just put the calipers on the front and they're fine. And that gets around from doing this. I've always been going to gusset this in, but I've never had any problems with it. So shock mounts, real simple. Build up, build off of the, uh, just build off the frame rail. These are, uh, that's what makes it so nice with these frame rails uh, doing this style is you, you, everything's square to build off of. You know, like these radiator mounts, you know, they're just, everything's square. It's so easy to build off of these, whereas stock one, you know, they're all over the place. They got several angles in them. Um, I prefer the shackles at the rear. Um, just personal preference. I like the way it looks better. Uh, on your front suspension, on your axle, when you, when you mock it up, you want to run a, you know, around eight degrees is good. You can run it up to 10. Um, I think this car's like seven and a half. What I had to do was get these little wedge plates. I think I got seven and a half. These are like three degrees. So I just tacked them to the axle here to make sure nothing moves. Uh, I think I got seven and a half in this car. It drives really good. It's been around 130 miles an hour. With no no drama, no issues. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I would do it differently if I did it again, but this is a this is a system that is proven and works. Um, you know, there's different ways to to do this stuff. This is just a basic go over um, shocks. I use this the stock Chevrolet uh, shock mounts that came with the axle. I always try to use as much uh, factory stuff as I can. I just think it works better. These, let me go to the other side so we can show you guys this. The steering arms, I got with a company and I forgot what they're called, but they built me these. You're not gonna believe it. These are polished aluminum, swedged in, custom made. These were $15 a piece and they're polished like chrome when you get them. Obviously these are like 10 years old. But they were like $15 a piece, custom made. And I put good himes in the end of them. Obviously, you don't want to uh, have, you know, junk himes. Nothing junk in the steering. Um, so, really, that's that's about it on the front suspension. A lot of it, you just have to, you just have to get in there and cut it off and just get started, you know, and ask guys. And, you know, we got our Facebook page, the Gas House Facebook page where we're always on there to answer questions for guys doing it um we'll make several other different videos of uh of doing this stuff but basically i got my stock one over here basically what we do is just i mean i cut like four and a half inches in front of this frontmost mount but you don't have to you can cut them out here where this frame splits right here right there you can cut them here and still, you know, be in front of your stock steering box if you wanted to try to use that. If you wanted to try to use that steering box, you could do that, definitely. Um, I just redo the steering and everything. One thing I did do on this car was I wanted to use the, I like the look of the stock steering column, All right? I like the, the look of the, the stock steering column in this thing. Um, you know, I wanted to keep kind of a factory look. So, but of course on a Tri-5, the steering shaft is integrated into it. So what I ended up doing was modifying the end of this column with the washer. And I built an old, my own shaft to go through here that, that accepted this double D right here. Where I could run the double D shaft with the short shaft. You can't see where the head or the short shaft here running down to the steering box so this wasn't hard to do it just took a little thinking 
to weld a washer on the end of that thing. And then I think I welded some type of washer on the inside uh, to sandwich the sandwich it the sh end of the shaft into. So the shaft is, you know, I can take this loose and the shaft stays in the steering column and everything. That way we run a, uh, we run a, a stock steering, steering column. Uh, that's about it guys um just a general go over of a you know somewhere to get started um like i said we're always available for to answer questions and uh all of those type of things so it's thanksgiving nice out here still in uh in georgia so i hope everybody's having a nice thanksgiving and um stay tuned make sure to like share and subscribe and stay tuned for more uh, automotive and gasser content. We have a we have a lot more to put out for you.